Welcome back to Death Toll Racing. We got a pretty cool fab project that I think will be handy for most of you guys at home. We're going to be making a little jib hoist. I'm going to be mounting our little jib hoist on the corner of the shipping container, which is right outside my shop door. All right, and here's our arsenal of parts other than a diagonal brace, which, I, which I'll have to get as we go. So it's an I-beam that was a salvage yard I-beam, um, low grade salvage yard because it does have some damage. Um, we're going to fix that and then uh, it should be good enough for what we're, what we're doing. I want this thing to be able to lift a thousand pounds um, without it feeling like it's going to taco or twist. Um, and we should be able to achieve that, uh, I'm guessing. Um, this is a four by two rec tube that I used to use as a fork extender, but it always gets stuck on the forks of my loader. And uh, I need to come up with something better, so we're just gonna go ahead and use it for this. Uh, and I already used the other one anyway, so I only have one now. Um, then for the trolley, we're gonna use this one ton trolley from Harbor Freight. Then this one ton Viver hoist, which is actually really cool. I'm kind of excited about this one because it can be used orientated just like this to pull cars or trees or whatever you want this way. And it has a trigger on the top, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, mainly what I'm going to use that for is pulling cars onto my hoist on onto my lift there, my four hoist lift. Um, I'm going to use it for that. And then we have a wireless remote for it and a wired remote for it. So there's three ways of operating that hoist and it can be orientated as you see it, or you can hang it from here and use it for lifting. So that's going to be pretty cool. So we're going to use that in a few things. I'm going to give you a little review on that because Viver did send that to me uh, to try and uh, we'll, we'll see how good it works, but I think it's gonna be actually a pretty cool lift. I'm excited for that lift, mainly for pulling cars onto my, onto my fur post lift because I have been using this thing. And this is just a boat winch that I got from Harbor Freight that I put a nut on and I use a drill to pull the cars up. Um, and it doesn't like it very much. It's not meant for that. <laughs> so that's, I'm misusing the crap out of that, but it's worked for me for years. And uh, this is gonna be a lot better because I can use it wirelessly and actually steer the car onto the lift. Um, and then this is how we're gonna pivot it. That will make sense when I show, you, show it to you. Um, this is actually a really clever and easy way of doing a pivoting joint instead of using some sort of bearing. Um, you're basically using sphericals. So misalignment, all that stuff, you're not gonna be breaking bearings because you don't have the top one perfectly aligned with the bottom one, uh, or if you're using a four bolt flange bearing um, and you get that popping every time you use it, that's because your bearings aren't perfectly aligned and they're not meant to constantly adjust. They're meant to adjust once and that's it. Um, but if you don't get them perfect, every time you move, swing your hoist back and forth, it's going to pop. And eventually you're going to wear that thing out because they're not meant to do that. That's why they pop like that. Um, and that's where these sphericals are, or using the spherical of a trailer hitch is extremely handy. So you could have these things pretty far off uh, and it'll still function the way it is. But the only thing that's critical is going to be your vertical measurement. Um, but we'll get to that when we get to it. So let's get going on building this thing. Fairly simple uh, fab project, but also um, it's not the easiest fab project in the world either. Um, there are some things to watch and I'll go over those as we get to them. All right, so now to assess the materials we have to work with, um, I'm just giving a measure up. I'm gonna cut my rec tube exactly in half. Um, that way I can uh, make both, both parts of our hinge side. Um, using a fireball tool square, these, this is an iron one. Um, these things are worth their weight in gold. Uh, fireball tools. I'll put a link in the description below for those, um, or at least to his website, and then you can find it. Um, those are also a Spokane thing. So cleaning up all the rust before we weld it uh, in all the structural areas, some of the areas I'll end up cheating on. Um, this is our little diagonal brace here. So this is in compression. So you're going to want to use something that's a little bit rigid on that. You're not going to want to use a flat bar or anything like that in that um, scenario. Um, if it if that were pulling, if we were to mount that ho that jib boom just like that um, then it could be a round bar or a flat bar or something like that because it'd be in tension all right guys so now i'm going to add basically one of these to it and what that does is it if this were to try to bend down this right here would try to get tight and if you notice on an engine hoist they put it basically right above the where the pressure is or just on the load side of where the pressure is from the cylinder um, and that's going to be tight so what i'm going to use is this um this isn't ideal ideally it should be straight and straight but i happen to have this as a leftover from building a gate so um what i'm going to do is that and i'm going to basically since this is where the load will be just like the cylinder in that cherry picker 
um, we're, we're going to put a brace going up from the, that tube to that tube. So the reason I did this tube was because this beam was a little more twisted than I thought it was. Um, and that allowed me to straighten the beam and keep it where I need it. Um, and I did, and I forgot to turn the camera on, but I did straighten the flanges out slightly, uh, or as good as I could with a hammer without twisting the beam up too bad. Um, and then I put that on there and that holds it the rest of the way so that it ends up being fairly straight. So now I'm just gonna, I just held that arched tube underneath the, uh, underneath the flat tube, scored a line and then just kind of ground it, cut it with a cutoff wheel and uh, made it good enough. So now I'm gonna put the, the hitches on. I did, there's gonna be an interference on the little lever uh, for actuating the receiver. Um, so I chopped it down, it just shortened it up a little bit so that I didn't have to have the hoist sticking out um, super far to make clearance for it. So I just chopped that down, evened everything out. Um, and now I need to shorten up the bottom receiver tube itself so that it doesn't you know go through the container uh, it needs to be flush with the container the top one i'm actually going to leave long and that that way when i set that thing up I, all i have to do is set that on top of the container i don't have to hold it up while i add my bolts so that, that was why the top one is long so it'll just be kind of sitting on top of the container on the corner block and now it's time to weld it out. Uh, I skip around on these so you don't warp it. Um, I'm doing a solid weld everywhere where load's going tra transferring through, like that from the tube to the I-beam there uh, that I have laying down the I-beam. Um, and then it's stitch welded the rest of the way. I just did a one six skip, so it's one inch of weld for every six inches um, eyeballed. So uh, that, that, that's all you really need. So some of, my, some of my cuts weren't perfect, so it took a little bit of filling. Uh, I, I had to do a couple, couple fudge passes in to fill a large larger than ideal gap and then i added that one inch square tube to the bottom that keeps the trolley from rolling off the end um, and also i'm going to put a rope through it uh, for moving it around so one inch bolts is what i'm using so i'm drilling exactly one inch one inch holes so that everything's real tight um, and then i did have to space that receiver right there down an eighth of an inch and that's because the other the other uh part that's on the on the on the jib boom side is the thickness of the metal offset it down an eighth of an inch. So it's something you have to watch for. Always do some test fitting and everything else on that. So I'm drilling the one inch throw, hole through the shipping container now. Um, and that shipping container is very thick. It's quarter inch on the outside and a half inch on the inside that I'm drilling right there. So I put the bolt in this way um, and that ends up not working out. I'm gonna have to turn it around. Um, there's not enough space when you shut the door. Um, there is enough space for the head of the bolt, but not for the nut and the extra bolt sticking through. I'm spraying here some WD-40 gel lube. It's basically spray grease. Uh, it works pretty good for this, this type of scenario. It uh, tends to stay where you put it. That stuff seems to work pretty good. I'm gonna take the remote with me. Well, it would have been a lot easier had I just spent the time to make uh, this, this hoist pick up level. Um, but it, it really wasn't that hard. The hardest part about these things, and it's really pretty much any bearing scenario, um, is dropping both of them on at the same time. You have to, they have to go on at the exact same time. You can't just drop one on and then the other. You have to drop them simultaneously. So um, you basically just have to get it all lined up and then push down, and that's where that remote on that winch uh, is really handy, and it being really responsive is, is nice as well. So 
this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of weight off of it, it's like so I can pull it. Because otherwise you're fighting, lifting this while you're pushing this down. There, we got it. So now we can go lift the weight off. Now I actually have to crawl up there and unhook it. Alright, let's see how it moves. We got it pretty level so it doesn't seem to have a favorable direction. Which is good because I was afraid it was going to always want to swing out, but it doesn't, so that's good. Cool. Alright, let's get our hoist down and we'll get it to put on our trolley and on our beam. Okay, so I left the backhoe here um, and that I'm gonna pull the trolley once we get it all put together all the way out to the end and then we're going to put a scale on it and pull up on my on my hook there um, and we will see at what point this looks like it's gonna start to deflect so that we can kind of give it our own backyard engineering load rating um, it's probably going to hold more than I need it to. Uh, one thing I am a little bit concerned of that will happen, it'll probably be the weakest point, is when we lift real hard um, on it, this bolt this bolt will be fine, but that bolt may start sucking and bending the tube in, so it start to get loose. Um, so probably what I, what I should do is put a big washer, kind of like I put on the inside, on the outside as well. Um, and I probably should have done that from the beginning, and I believe I even have an extra one. So any, anyway, I'm going to watch that. If it, doesn't, if it doesn't pull in, it doesn't pull in, and we don't have to worry about it. But um, we might just have to throw a wrench on it every once in a while. Uh, but anyway, so let's get this trolley put together. They're pretty simple. You have to use all the spacers should be in there. It's just whether, it's just which side of the plate do they end up being on. I will spare you from having to watch me tighten the lock nuts. Uh, it's just a, a nut on either side of that shaft and then a lock nut on either side of the shaft um, just to keep everything tight on there. So you should end up with all your spacers used. There should be no leftover. It's just whether or not uh, they're on the inside or the outside of the plates. Okay, let's, we are all the way at the end. A little bit of weight from the chain, but that's okay. Okay, so now, not only do we want to watch the weight. So, that's going to be annoying lifting on my tractor because the weight's going to constantly go down because the resi hydraulics resist it but then they slowly start leaking going in that direction. Um, so that's probably not the best thing in the world to be trying to pick up. But mostly we're curious about our little hoist and I'm gonna stand back. So it's 245 kilograms or it was. I let it off because I want to see the deflection in our crane. So I'm going to move this up a little bit. So that's 500 kilograms, so that's a thousand pounds if I'm not mistaken. That was very effortless on that winch. Hoist, I should say. And I don't see a lot of deflection. So five, 580 kilograms. 
Okay, I just made some noise on my, it was actually my shipping container that popped. So 650 kilograms. Let's see if the bolt came loose like I was suspecting. I didn't notice. No, it's still tight. So we're still good there. So this plate hits this button and what that does is it keeps you from pushing up if it's all the way up already. See, it doesn't work. So now it doesn't let me go up because it's bottomed out and it doesn't want you to break itself. So the coasting on it, um, that may or may not be, you know, obviously if there's weight on it, it won't coast, but, uh, or enough weight on it, it won't coast. For, for what I'm going to use it for, that's not an issue, but just, just be warned that it does coast a little bit. Um, if you're pulling something real light, uh, lifting something really light, it'll coast. But it's not something you can't overcome, but it is just something to be aware of um, for this type of a thing. So let's try pulling a car with it. So I'm just dragging the tires on the Jeep. And obviously we're going uphill. All right, guys. So... <laughs> As you just saw, I pulled it um, and it was at 850. Um, I forgot that this is actually only a 500 pound or 500 kilogram unit and we were pulling 850 kilograms. So it's obviously rated lower. I mean, for safety, you don't want to exceed that. Um, and then for the Jeep, just the weight of the Jeep going down the hill, my chain slipped. Um, I just have it on a round bar as it slid. Um, just the weight of the Jeep pulling on it is 223 kilograms. So that's probably more than I was expecting. But I mean, it is a pretty steep hill right here. That's more than I was expecting it would take to pull that up the hill. But it does it and it's not a problem. Summary time. So I have zero complaints with my lift other than there is, I guess, one complaint. Um, and that is the cosmetics of that upper arc. Um, I feel like that should be straight. Um, and so it drives the engineered side of my brain a little nuts, but that thing turned out cool. And it's also really cool that I can, uh, I can put it on any, any shipping container. All I have to do is drill that one bottom hole. So pretty cool. Um, as far as our little hoist thing, uh, I am really, really happy with this thing. And I did do an upgrade. I put Velcro on it <laughs> so that I can hang the remote on there like that. And then I hung it right next to the door. So if I need to use it outside, I'll just throw it up on the on the beam. Um, and if I won't need to use it in here for pulling a car up on the lift that's not running, I can do use it there as well. So that worked out pretty cool. So anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Check out the link below for that Viver, and I'll put a discount code as well. Um, using that link helps support the channel as well as using the Amazon links below helps support the channel as well. So thanks for watching. We'll see you again real soon.